All right, Chicago Bull fans, let's take a look at the NBA standings as of March 27, 2021. Here we go with the Chicago Bulls at a 19 and 24 uh two game losing streak, 4 and 6 in their last 10. Absolute terrible. Look at the Eastern Conference as a whole. You've got 76ers, the Nets, the Bucks, all respectable. But then you go to the Hornets at number four. And look at that. Four through 15. Absolute trash at this point in time. Trash. None of these teams have any business being in the playoffs at this time. Now, 19 and 24 for the Bulls. So they make a trade. They bring in this guy. They call him the Vooch. This is exciting if this all should pan out for the Bulls because apparently, I'm not really familiar with this player, but he can shoot the three really well, pass the ball, and he can make shots all over the court. So we look at his percentage of shots made. And the shots he's taken, it's pretty pretty clear to see he likes to shoot dead center. Then off to his right, which would be to his left. And we can see he likes to be in the paint. And we know he doesn't like to go to our left or to his right. But scoring 24 points a game, um, 20 field goal attempts, making 40%. Of his six threes he takes per game. So, obviously the best shooting big man in the NBA. Um, And this little article here on Bleacher Nation. Uh, let's see who. Um, right here, Schuster. Mr. Schuster. Elias Schuster. So, we read right here, um, I'm most excited about thinking about Zach Levine and Vooch's two-man game isn't enough to make you salivate, then something is wrong with you. Two of the most efficient scores at their respective positions, this pairing truly could work their way of the dynamic duo ranks. Levine averages the fourth most points per game as as the pick-and-roll ball handler, and he averages the sixth most possession as such per game. Meanwhile, the Vooch leads the league in points per game as the roll man, and he is second in possessions. The Vooch is also averaging 40% from downtown, and 48% from two-point range in catch-and-shoot situations. In other words, operating in pick-and-roll and pick-and-pop situations has become second nature to these two, and I expect it to make for a beautiful partnership. Obviously, on paper, we look at the facts. If Levine is at his best in pick-and-roll, And the Vooch is also at his best at pick and roll and pick and pop. That's a perfect combination. So credit to the general manager for finding the player to make the perfect fit. Um, This guy can shoot. I mean, we look at the numbers here and the numbers don't lie. He can shoot. And we see the facts that He's he's really good at pick and roll, pick and pop. That's what Zach Levine does. So this ought to be dynamic. It really has a chance. So up to this point, the Bulls have been boring. They've been disappointing. They've sucked. Um, a lot of bad players on the team. But now you go ahead and add this guy coming in at almost seven feet tall. He is 30 years old. I I wish he was in his 20s, but 
At least he's 30 and not 34. Averaging 24 points a game this year. 11 rebounds, 3 assists, 1 steal. He's a big guy. So a huge improvement. I mean, this is a dramatic improvement as opposed to Warren Carter and anyone else the Bulls had. So welcome to the Bulls, Booch. And I can't wait to see what you do. He's going to play tonight. So if I'm not doing anything, um, if I can get the time, I'll watch him play with the Bulls. Now, obviously, it'll be his first time playing with the Bulls. So I, I don't expect the Bulls to come out and have perfect chemistry and just and just be, you know, playing dynamic. But why not? Zach Levine's kind of hurt. He may not play. He may play. But I think he wants to play because he wants to play with this guy. But it's going to be interesting to see. So let's imagine that this guy, the Vooch, comes in. And him and Zach Levine, they do their thing. How will that improve the Bulls' standings? So we know they're 19 and 24 right now. And then uh, marketing. What will marketing do? With this guy playing on the Bulls, will he will he like will he shrink even more and like fade away? Because we already know that Zach Levine and this guy are going to be the primary scores. The ball is going to be in their hands. So what's marketing going to do? Is he going to find his true role, or is he going to shrink? Or will they just trade him because it's not going to work out? So to me, uh, lower marketing, this is the time now where he needs to find his, his role. What is he going to be for the Chicago Bull team? Is he going to step up and be a third option, a legit third option? Will he blossom? Or is he going to shrink and just fade away? We're going to find out. So up to this point, it's not been worth watching Chicago Bull basketball. Not at all. But now, um, it's worth giving them a look. So I'm going to be watching marketing. I'm going to watch what he does, see how he's affected. And then, of course, I'm going to watch the chemistry between Zach and the Booch. And... Kobe, let's see what he does with the big guy there. Uh, Patrick Williams, Thaddeus Young. And then we look at players who I just feel like are stealing NBA checks. Um, just committing theft. Players like this guy. This guy is stealing. I mean, he's stealing. Uh, Felicio, um, this is robbery. Um, but you know, if you can get in there and, and, and get that money, um, go ahead and do it. But still, you look at the roster, you look at the roster from top to bottom, right? Let's be honest here. Um, let's see what players would you take on your team in all, in all seriousness, which players? Um, let's see. I would take Zach Levine on my team, obviously. Laura, I'll take Markinen and try to make him be the best he can be. That's two players. Um, and then the Vooch, that's three. And um, I'll take Thaddeus Young coming off my bench and Patrick Williams. So that's five. And maybe, I don't know about Kobe White. He's not really a point guard, so I don't know about him, but let's just take him. But still, overall, the roster is not very good, top from bottom. But is the roster better right now with the Vooch and with uh, Daniel and Troy Brown, uh, uh, Troy Brown Jr.? Is it better than what it was? Yes, yes, it's better. 
But the East is pathetic. So the Bulls, they could easily, easily go all the way up to number four. It won't be hard because look at how look at how bad the East is. So the Bulls, without a doubt, can make the fourth seed in the East. And depending just how good the Vooch is, they may be able to creep up to number three or something like that. Look at the West. We got the Jazz, the Suns, the Clippers, the Lakers, the Nuggets, the Trailblazers. I mean, the West is loaded. Now, what I would love to see, I would love to see, let's say the top 12 teams in the NBA make the playoffs, regardless of conference, right? So we look at this. We got one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, six teams right there. Seven, eight, nine, and then we got to go back. 10, 11, and then 12. All right, so the, the tw- so if the season ended today, the 12 best teams, uh, Jazz, Suns, Clippers, Lakers, Nuggets, Trailblazers, Mavericks, 76ers, Nets, and Bucks. Um, Spurs and Mavericks, right now they have 20 losses, so they would have to play a game. Whoever wins makes it into the makes it into the playoffs. But you take the 12 best teams, regardless of conference. 16 is too many. If you took 16 teams, you're literally taking teams with a losing record. In the Eastern Conference this year, there is a real, real possibility that you could have up to three teams with a losing record in the Eastern Conference playoffs. That's pathetic. Who wants to see that? No one. No one wants to see that. You look at this. 22 and 24, they would be in the playoffs. 22 and 23, they'd be in the playoffs. And then 23 and 22 for these for No, that that's terrible basketball. So you'll have these teams playing And then you look at the Western Conference, you look at their top eight, and it's much better. It's just no comparison. So the Jazz will have to play a lot tougher competition. Uh, The top three seeds in the East, um, pretty easy. Uh, But anyway... The Bulls, 19-24. I'm going to remember this right here. Remember the record. And we're going to see in time if the Bulls can rise up to a number four seed. They should be able to. But the good news is, if you're a Bulls fan, the good news is that we have a general manager who can make the right trades, get the right players and we look at this guy, he just fits perfectly with what the Bulls do, what Zach Levine does, what Billy Donovan, the head coach, what he wants to do. So it's a, it's a perfect trade, actually. When you look at the numbers, you look at the facts, um, this is a perfect trade. So I'm going to watch the Chicago Bulls, see how it all plays out. But yeah. Welcome to the Chicago Bulls, Vooch. We need you, and we need some decent basketball to watch because we're tired of seeing the Chicago Bulls suck. So, nice to see something different. All right, so how good will the Vooch be with Zach Levine? And what will happen to lower marketing? What will happen to marketing? Will he rise? Will he shrink? What's going to happen? We'll find out. But all right, Chicago Bull fans, let's see what happens.